Astronomers have discovered more than 4,000 exoplanets outside our solar system so far. Most of these are not particularly conducive to life. For example, planet Kelts 9b is so hot that its atmosphere is constantly melting. The darkest known planet, Tres 2b, has an atmospheric temperature of 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, 980 degrees Celsius. On the other end of the inhospitable spectrum is GJ433d, whose discoverers described it as the coldest Neptune-like planet ever discovered. But there are also many planets within their star's habitable zone, or the Goldilocks distance, conducive to surface temperatures that are not too hot or too cold for life as we know it to evolve. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new habitable planets that scientists have discovered most recently. In astronomy and astrobiology, the circumstellar habitable zone is the region around a star where a planet with sufficient atmospheric pressure can maintain liquid water on its surface. A potentially habitable planet implies a terrestrial planet within the circumstellar habitable zone and with conditions roughly comparable to those of Earth and thus potentially favorable to Earth-like life. However, the question of what makes a planet habitable is much more complex than having a planet located at the right distance from its host star so that water can be liquid on its surface. Various geophysical and geodynamical aspects, the radiation and the host star's plasma environment, can influence the evolution of planets and life if it originated. In April 2020, a team of transatlantic scientists using reanalyzed data from NASA's Kepler Space Telescope discovered an Earth-sized exoplanet orbiting in its star's habitable zone, the area around a star where a rocky planet could support liquid water. Scientists discovered this planet called Kepler 1649c when looking through old observations from Kepler, which the agency retired in 2018. While previous searches with a computer algorithm misidentified it, researchers reviewing Kepler data took a second look at the signature and recognized it as a planet. Out of all the exoplanets found by Kepler, this distant world, located 300 light-years from Earth, is most similar to Earth in size and estimated temperature. This newly revealed world is only 1.06 times larger than our planet. Also, the amount of starlight it receives from its host star is 75% of the amount of light Earth receives from our Sun, meaning the exoplanet's temperature may be similar to our planet's as well. But unlike Earth, it orbits a red dwarf. Though none have been observed in this system, this type of star is known for stellar flare-ups that may make a planet's environment challenging for any potential life. It orbits so closely to its star, too, that one year is just 19.5 of our days. But the star puts out significantly less heat than the sun, so that's actually right in the proper region to allow for the presence of liquid water. There's still a lot that remains to be discovered about this exoplanet, like what its atmosphere is like. There could be any number of other problems with Kepler 1649c relative to its ability to support life as well, including errors in the data used to determine that it is Earth-like and in the correct habitable zone around its star. But this represents one of the best ever potential extrasolar planets found in terms of its potential of supporting life, thanks to the combo of its size and the temperature orbital band it occupies. Another discovery was also made in January 2020 by the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, also known as TESS. The newfound exoplanet known as TOI 700d lies just 101.5 light-years from Earth, in the southern constellation Dorado, making it a good candidate for follow-up observations by other instruments. TESS was designed and launched specifically to find Earth-sized planets orbiting near stars. Paul Hertz, Astrophysics Division Director at NASA Headquarters in Washington, said in a statement. Planets around nearby stars are easiest to follow up with larger telescopes in space and on Earth. TESS, which launched in April 2018, hunts for planets using the transit method, looking for telltale dips in stellar brightness caused by orbiting worlds crossing stars' faces from the satellite's perspective. This same strategy was used to great effect by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, which discovered about 70% of the 4,000 known exoplanets. TESS found three different planets circling the star TOI 700. One of the other planets is a red dwarf about 40% as massive, 40% as wide, and 50% as hot as Earth's sun. The innermost world, TOI 700b, is roughly Earth-sized and completes one orbit every 10 Earth days. The center planet, TOI 700c, is 2.6 times bigger than our planet, meaning it's likely to be a gassy mini-Neptune and zips around TOI 700 every 16 days. 
TOI 700D, the outermost planet in the system, is the one that is most intriguing. It's just 20% larger than Earth and completes one orbit every 37 days. The alien world receives 86% of the stellar energy that Earth gets from the Sun, putting TOI 700D in the habitable zone, according to the Discovery Team members. All three planets may be tidally locked to TOI 700, always showing it the same face just as Earth's moon only ever shows us its near side. But tidal locking does not necessarily preclude the possibility of life on an alien world, astronomers say. According to Discovery team leader Emily Gilbert, in 11 months of data, no flares from the star were seen, which improves the chances that TOI 700D is habitable and makes it easier to model its atmospheric and surface conditions. Red dwarfs are generally much more active than the Sun, and there is considerable debate about how habitable their planets may be as a result. Frequent and powerful flaring, for example, can strip away a planet's atmosphere. TESS is not the only spacecraft that spotted evidence of TOI 700D. A different team of researchers used NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope to confirm the existence of the alien planet. Team leader Joseph Rodriguez, an astronomer at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics in Cambridge, Massachusetts, said, Spitzer saw TOI 700D transit exactly when we expected it to. It's a great addition to the legacy of a mission that helped confirm two of the TRAPPIST-1 planets and identify five more. TRAPPIST is a dwarf star that lies just 40 light-years away from us and hosts seven Earth-sized planets, three of which appear to be in the habitable zone. The system is a prime candidate for observation by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, which is scheduled to launch in 2021. James Webb should be able to probe the TRAPPIST-1 world's atmospheres for potential biosignature gases, such as methane and oxygen, scientists have said. TOI 700 is a bit farther away, but it's still close enough to be scrutinized in more detail in the future. And scientists do hope to learn more about it via observations by other instruments. For example, they want to pin down TOI 700D's mass by measuring how much its gravity tugs the host star this way and that. Without knowing the mass, it's unclear how dense TOI 700 is, and thus if it's a rocky world like Earth. A 2015 review concluded that the exoplanets Kepler-62f, Kepler-186f, and Kepler-442b were likely the best candidates for being potentially habitable. These are at a distance of 990, 490, and 1,120 light-years away, respectively. Of these, Kepler-186f is closest in size to Earth, with 1.2 times Earth's radius, and it's located towards the outer edge of the habitable zone around its red dwarf host star. The potentially habitable planet TOI 700D is only just over 100 light years away. In September 2020, astronomers identified 24 potential superhabitable planets, which are planets better than Earth, including unconfirmed planets from among more than 4,000 confirmed exoplanets at present, based on astrophysical parameters as well as the natural history of known life forms on the Earth. The planet in the next star system is Proxima b. At just four light years away, it's by far the closest Earth-like planet we know about. But unfortunately, there is no life. A paper published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters announces the discovery of an extreme flaring event from Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our Sun. Detected in data from 2019, the flare lasted for seven seconds, but the Hubble Space Telescope saw an increase in brightness by a factor of 14,000. That makes it the brightest and one of the most violent ever detected in the Milky Way galaxy. Proxima Centauri is only about an eighth the mass of our Sun, a red dwarf star of a kind that is normally small and dim. The two exoplanets thought to be in orbit around Proxima Centauri in its habitable zone are getting hit by solar flares at least once a day, if not several times a day. As well as detections of solar flares in recent years, it's also possible that the Proxima b and the recently discovered Proxima c are being sterilized of life by large asteroid impacts. So any hope of life on Proxima Centauri's two planets are fading fast. Because our Sun has nurtured life on Earth for nearly 4 billion years, conventional wisdom would suggest that stars like it would be prime candidates in the search for other potentially habitable worlds. G-type yellow stars like our Sun, however, are shorter-lived and less common in our galaxy. Stars slightly cooler and less luminous than our Sun, called orange dwarfs, are considered by some scientists as potentially better for advanced life. They can burn steadily for tens of billions of years. This opens up a vast timescape for biological evolution to pursue an infinity of experiments for yielding robust life forms. 
And for every star like our Sun, there are three times as many orange dwarfs in the Milky Way. Identified exoplanets with Earth-like characteristics provide scientists with good candidates for future study, including targeting via Earth-based and in-space observation instruments. It will probably be a long time before we can definitely say anything about whether or not they might support actual life, but even finding exoplanets with the potential is an exciting development. What do you think about having another habitable planet? Do you think we'll ever find one? Let us know in the comments below and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.